Your vocals are the first thing everybody listens for. It's probably where you're getting the most of your critiques as well. It's the thing people relate to the most, they listen to the lyrics, and they are the most judgmental over your vocals. So this is the most important part of anything inside of your mix. The voice is a very, very dynamic instrument, and the great thing about Studio One is it has everything you need to mix a really professional in-your-face vocal. If this is your first time here, I'm Andrew Barth, producing In The Box, where I teach you how to make incredible sounding music without analog gear, and I think you're better off without it. And today I'm gonna show you how you can do everything right inside of Studio One. I got two things that are gonna help you a lot. First is I actually have Studio One presets. They are vocal presets and then a few other presets in there. They're absolutely free. That will be the top link in the description below. Now in this video, I'm showing you how to mix the vocals you've already recorded, but there is a really detailed process of how to record vocals, and I also have a free guide for you as well. So that way if you need to record vocals at home, even if you don't have acoustic treatment on the walls, or even if you don't have fancy microphones or any sort of gear, you can still get professional quality recording. So both of those gifts will be down in the description below. Both of them are completely free. And just between those two gifts, it will push you farther than I was within my at least first three years of making music. I had no idea what I was doing. So between those two things, they're going to help you a lot. So here we have some really great recorded vocals. They were not recorded into any sort of analog gear whatsoever. These vocals were recorded with an SM7B directly into a focus right and then directly into the computer. It's a really simple setup and it sounds great. Now we have lots of layers and before we do anything else, I want to adjust the volume of these layers. If I have lefts and rights, I'll make sure that I put those where they need to be. So I have a double left, double rights, the harmonies, the layers. I'll put everything where I want them to in the mix. I will have a main vocal, and then I will have the vocalist sing that again exactly the same way, and then put one in the left, and then I'll have him or her do it again, and I'll put the other one in the right, and then I will continue to stack all of those harmonies as well one in the left and one in the right. The reason why we don't take the exact same track and duplicate it down is because it's the same track. Panning it one way or another is not gonna make a difference. It's just gonna make everything louder. We need those subtle nuances, those little differences between the different takes that really gets us that really nice, rich, full sound. So we have the main vocal here, which sounds like this. But we can never go home And some things you can never know now, the only thing that's on these vocals is tuning. There's no compression, no anything. She recorded these in a closet with her uh, microphone and uh, the gain staging was done really well. We wanna be hitting around negative 18. But we can never go home and some things you can and that's right about where we're hitting. That is perfect. All of those specific settings are in the Ultimate Guide to Recording Vocals at Home. Like I said, I have a link to that in the description. It's completely free. But that's where you want to start is around negative 18. Now I will add my other vocal layers on top. And then I will start to balance those with volume only. We're not touching a single plug-in yet. I want to get the volumes right where I want them. You can never know. We'll cleanse all our sins and perdition. See how those little layers are starting to add a lot to the vocal already? So we're in a pretty good spot here. I haven't loaded a single plugin. The only thing that's on here is a little bit of tuning, but we can tackle that in a completely different video. But if you do any sort of tuning, make sure you do that first before you do anything else. Now in Studio One, I like to select all of these tracks, all of the vocal tracks at least, and I will right click and then I will click Pack Folder. So now I have a folder here of all of the vocals. Now I will just color this however I like. I think vocals should be pink, but that's your own personal preference. And then I can come down here and click Add Bus Channel. So now all of these vocals are going to a single bus, and this is really key for a few reasons. But we can never go. So I can solo that. And I can turn the volume up and down, and it turns the volume up and down on all of the vocals. It is just really handy, really nice. If you want to separate that out between your harmonies, you can as well. But for this video, I'm just going to show you how I do it with all of the vocal stacks at once. If you have a single vocal, don't worry about it. Just use a single channel like this and follow the rest of the process throughout here. This just saves you a lot of time in the future if you are doing any sort of volume adjustments and anything like that. And then you can treat all the vocals at the same time if you want to with one plugin. So for the main vocals, we're just gonna solo the main vocal. I like to add a little bit of EQ. Some people like to compress before the EQ and some people like to do it the way I do. It doesn't matter, just you have to have EQ and compression to get a really good vocal. I like to start with EQ. And I'm gonna start with rolling off the low end 
right around 100-ish hertz for female vocal and around 80 hertz for a male vocal. But we can never go home. There's just a lot of that low end that just doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to increase the uh, dB per octave here just so that way it rolls off a little bit more there. You can see how it's kind of a flat curve and now it's more of an aggressive curve. I'm going to do uh, 24 dB over the active. But we can never go home and some things you can never know. Now I want to cut before I boost. Anytime you load an EQ, that should be the general rule of thumb. You want to find frequencies that aren't necessarily pleasing and cut those. You will eventually develop an ear for what things sound like, but until then, start grabbing a frequency band and start sweeping around the frequency spectrum until you find things that are just unpleasant. I have very specific frequencies in that guide below. Super helpful. So now let's sweep through the frequencies. But we can never go home And some things you can never know Sounds like a little bit of a whistle there. We'll cleanse all our sins and perdition And pray the... Yep, I don't like that, so we'll cut that out a little bit. Around like 4 dB. But we can never go home. There's also a honkiness right around 500. Home. And some things you can never know. We'll cleanse all our sins and perdition. And pray the ghosts on our own. And now I want to add just a bit of brightness to this vocal. But we can never go home. So I'm going to put a high shelf on there starting around 5k ish. And some things you can never know. Now let's turn the plugin off. All our sins and perdition. Now let's turn it on. And pray the ghosts on our own. We're in a really, really good spot. Right here is the lowest part of the frequency there in that vocal, and that's what you call the fundamental frequency. You can attenuate that a little bit if you want to, and I'm just going to turn it down just a touch. I'm not going to be using the dynamic section of this EQ, at least for this video. But we can never go home. So now we're going to load a compressor. And I want to look for around negative 3 to negative 6 dB of gain reduction. And that's this meter right here. But we can never go home. And some things you can never know. Let's turn it to a 4 to 1 ratio. All our sins and perdition. And pray the ghosts on our own. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of taking off those tops there in the vocal. So any sort of like transient, anything that's kind of poking through, I just kind of want to attenuate that down a little bit. But we can never go home And some things you can never know We'll cleanse all our sins and perdition So I think at the loudest point it was like negative 5 dB of gain reduction But we can never go home About negative 6 So now what we can do is we can take this makeup gain here We can take this from auto to off And bring this up plus 6 dB So the volume that we turned down off the top is now getting brought up and now everything gets brought up. So the vocal is getting compressed. The louder parts are becoming quieter, the quieter parts are becoming louder. And now the vocal is sitting a little bit more flat. But we can never go home and some things you can never know. Now I like to stack compression. So I like to add a, another compressor right next to it. Instead of doing everything with one move, I like to do things with a few smaller moves. Now this compressor is to get it to sound a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to do a 20 to 1 ratio here. I'm going to bring the threshold down until I'm getting around negative 3-ish dB of gain reduction. But we can never go home And some things you can never know And what I want to do here is I want to take the release and I want to speed it up I want to take the attack and I want to slow it down. That way it doesn't grab the transient too quickly and it comes back faster. So it sounds kind of like it's pumping a little bit. It's sounding aggressive. And once again, we're going to take the makeup gain here and we're going to turn it up by about 3 dB, which was about how much we were cutting. But we can never go home. If I turn the second compressor off, some things you can never know. And I'll turn it back on. We'll cleanse all our sins and perdition. See how it sounds like the vocal is just that much closer to you? That's exactly what I'm looking for with the second compressor. If I try to do everything with one, it ends up being too much. So I do subtle moves here and then a more aggressive move. 
happier. Now, one last thing I like to add on any vocal mix is some sort of saturation. And there is a plugin called Red Light Distortion inside of Studio One, and this thing sounds fantastic. We wanna add just a little bit of grit and drive to this vocal. But we can never go home, and some things you can never know. But we can never go home, and some things you can never know. So we're just kind of getting it to distort just a little bit, and I'm just saturating it and making it sound a little bit warmer. I might turn this to the soft tube mode here. But we can never go home. Oh, yeah. And some things you can never know. We'll cleanse all our sins in perdition. Just makes it stand out a little bit more. And now the final plugin will be the DSer. This is new to Studio One Six. If you are not using Studio One Six, that's fine. You don't necessarily need a DSer. You could just throw on another EQ and find those specific spots in the frequency spectrum there that is making it sound a little bit harsh. As a standard, it's usually around 6.8 kilohertz there. And so you can just use that. But if you do have Studio One Six and you have the DSer plugin, this is great. But we can never go and some things you can never so notice how every time she says something with the word s in it anything that has sibilance it is getting cut pretty drastically we can never go home and some things you so around negative 60 b of gain reduction all our sins in perdition and pray the ghosts on our so it's just attenuating that vocal. I literally loaded the plugin and did nothing with it and it just sounds great. Now always make sure you're going back and checking the vocal mix with the rest of your mix as well. But we can never go home And some things you can never know now I'm gonna take that vocal mix and basically duplicate all of those plugins to these other tracks. So I can just select these tracks and then I can drag and drop these plugins directly on the track. Since it was the same vocalist, the same microphone, the same room, and everything's the same, you can get a really accurate result by just copying and pasting all of those presets that we just built over onto the rest of the channels. But we can never go and some things you can never know We'll cleanse all our sins in perdition It's sounding really, really good. Now remember at the beginning of this video when I added everything to a vocal bus? This is where it's gonna come in handy. So now that we have all of these vocals, they're running to one bus. And we wanna add some effects to these vocals. So now we can come down here to the sends. We can click add a send and add effects channel. Then I can just open the mixer here and go down to effects one. And I wanna add some reverb and delay to these vocals. So if I just come up here, select the plus icon to add another plugin, I can add reverb, which is just the classic room reverb. And I'm gonna add some analog delay as well. So now I'm gonna put the delay before the reverb because I want that delay to kind of hit that reverb and make that reverb sound longer and longer and longer. I'm gonna take the mix of this reverb and bring it down to around 50-ish percent. And then I'm gonna come back to the analog delay. I'm gonna sync it with the beat of the project. And then I'm just looking for probably eighth notes. Let's take a listen to that. But we can never go home And some things you can never know We'll go to eighth notes. But we can never go home And some things you can never know And now those are the vocal effects. Really simple, really easy. If I mute those. But we can never go and some things you can never know will cleanse all of Now we'll just blend those in with the original vocals. And some things you can never know. So not only have I mixed an entire vocal section with just the Stock Studio One plugins, I've also mixed an entire song with just Stock Studio One plugins. If you wanna see that video, you can click right here. Studio One has some fantastic plugins and I just scratched the surface in this video. So if you wanna know more, click that video there. Now as always, go create.